As already indicated, my name is Adrian Doreen Crenshaw, um, and this particular presentation is about Mutilla Day, a project I started up to uh, easily demonstrate the OWASP top 10 web vulnerabilities. Now, first of all, a little bit about me. I run irongeek.com. I'm a local computer geek, and uh, this is a website I run about various things that interest me, mostly computer security, a little bit about weightlifting, and some general computer stuff. I have a major interest in InfoSec education. One of my future goals is to basically be a teacher. And uh, I don't know anything, I'm just a geek with extra time on my hands. I'm not a professional web application developer. And technically, my profession isn't necessarily even computer security. That brings up the question, why should you listen to me? Well, sometimes it takes a noob to teach a noob. And it's been my I have this pet theory that the best person to teach someone else something is someone who's just learned it themselves, because they know the questions that someone else is going to ask, hopefully, and is going to realize what sticking spots are. Someone who has a great level of knowledge about a particular subject may take for granted that other people aren't going to know, or aren't going to take for granted that people know what they don't necessarily know. I've noticed this way back when, when I was in, doing an intro to a computers class, and it you know, blew my mind that people didn't know how to use a mouse. Okay, so what's this talk about? Well, it's about two things. The OWASP top 10, and technically I'm only going to be covering the top five because of time restrictions. If you want more information about the OWASP top 10, it's at this URL, and the slides will be online eventually, and if you want them after the presentation, just come up and find me. Um, OWASP top 10 is essentially, they did a little bit of survey work and some calculating and tried to come up with what they thought were the big, tennis, the big 10 web vulnerabilities, the most common ones. And this particular site is going to be listing what those are, give you more details on how to fix them, and so forth. They have a, a product out called WebGoat. It's a free uh, Java server pages implementation that has a, imp, uh, uh, deliberately implements a bunch of different security vulnerabilities. And you can check it out for testing uh, scanning tools against. But the one problem I had with it was, first of all, it was Java, which I wasn't as familiar with, and I thought it was a little bit more complicated to give people an introduction to the various web vulnerabilities. Also, I wanted something that would cover the top 10 step by step so that let's say you went into management and tried to explain what a cross-site scripting vulnerability was or an SQL injection vulnerability was. WebGoat might get a little bit too complex, but I tried to keep Mutilidae dirt simple. And Mutilidae is just a simple set of PHP scripts that implement, implement all 10 vulnerabilities. By the way, for those who are wondering why I named it Mutilidae, it's my favorite wasp, and the group's called OWASP, so on and so forth. How many other people out here have a favorite wasp? Okay. It's a cool, it's also known as a cow killer. It's a really pretty bug. Anyway, in order from the 2007 list, and yes, they all come out of a 2009 list before long, my understanding, these are the top 10 web vulnerabilities according to OWASP. First of all, it's cross-site scripting, second, injection flaws, Three, malicious, malicious file execution, and they seem to include malicious file includes as well, or remote file includes into this particular category. Uh, insecure direct object references, and cross-site request forgery. Those are the five I'm going to try to cover, timing allowed. Um, some of the ones they talk about is information leakage and improper error handling. I'm not going to be covering that in depth, but you will be seeing it. Uh, broken authentication and session management, not going to be covering that, but you're technically going to see it because my entire site that I've implemented is pretty hideous as far as uh, authentication and session management is concerned. Insecure cryptographic storage, insecure uh, communications is number nine. For insecure communications, look at any of the videos I have on my website on sniffers. I've covered that topic a whole lot. Uh, and finally, failure to restrict URL access. We're just going to cover the top five because of time. I'm hoping maybe sometime in the future, even with OWASP or with ISSA, to have like a four-hour class where we sit down, actually mess with Mutilidae, hack each other's boxes, and then at the end have people split them into teams and actually fix the problems. I'm going to be concentrating mostly on showing what the problems are and only going to briefly cover how to fix them, but you can find out a lot more details for your particular development environment on the OWASP Top 10 website. Now, OWASP uh, Matilda, as I was talking about before, I designed it to be a teaching tool, something you can easily illustrate the OWASP Top 10 to people with. I'm hoping to get people to use it in university classrooms. It's written in PHP and MySQL. 
one of the reasons I did it is because PHP is fairly easy to learn. Uh, a lot of different platforms will work with it, and uh, it's really easy to write vulnerabilities in it. Some people say PHP is inherently insecure. I'm not going to necessarily say that. It just it lets the developer shoot themselves in the foot a lot. It's really easy to write web vulnerabilities in a. Well, actually, to give you an illustration, I'm not the only person that thinks this. And uh, uh, let me see if I can find. Ah, yes. This is a cartoon I found online where I was trying to look for images of Clippy for an uh, uh, injection I'm going to do a little bit later on. You appear to be writing a PHP content management system. Would you like me to automatically insert XXS vulnerabilities? <laughs> the running joke is there's a lot of stuff in PHP. It, it, it allows the user to shoot themselves in the foot. Or I should say the developer to shoot himself in the foot. It's meant to be a lot simpler than WebGoat. I'd still recommend looking at WebGoat. WebGoat implements vulnerabilities that mine doesn't. And you want a more, like for instance, I'm not going to talk about session, uh, sorry, um, HTTP request splitting and so forth. But WebGoat would. So I still recommend looking at WebGoat. But for something that's introductory, I think Matilda might be a better choice for uh, students that are just beginning to look into web security. Also for showing management what a web vulnerability actually means. It's very simple to exploit. As some people said before, PHP almost writes exploits for uh, almost write. Oh, pardon me. PHP almost exploits itself. Um, it's pretty easy to reset. Essentially, you can screw it all up with all sorts of SQL injections and uh, uh, XXS all over the place, and quickly get it back to a functioning state. And it also includes a tips function, so students can click on tips, and it will actually tell them how to exploit this particular application. Okay. Installing Matilda for the very lazy people out there. Essentially, what you have to do is download Matilda. It's in a little zip file on my website. Next, grab Zamp. How many people here have you ever used Zamp? Okay, you've used Zamp. Zamp is a really uh, neat little package that essentially packages together Apache, MySQL, PHP, and a few other odds and ends all into one little folder. They have a Linux version and a Windows version. I'm going to be using the Windows version today. For the Windows version, you just basically extract it someplace. Run the setup so it puts all the environmental variables in the right location, and then you have a fully functioning Apache web server running on your machine that you can use with PHP, MySQL, and a bunch of other software. So it's really convenient for testing things. Um, I have a video on my website on how to install Mutilla Day, but it, it really is quite simple. Uh, once you have that extracted, you just simply uh, extract Mutilla Day, put it into the htdocs folder. And there you go. There is one fourth step that I highly recommend you do, and that is if you go into the uh, ZAMP Lite directory, Apache, conf, HTTP, D, conf, set it to listen only to local host. I made Mutilla Day incredibly vulnerable. You do not want to be running this on any kind of production network. So I highly recommend you set that. Or if you happen to be trying to use a VM so you can use tools from like um, the OAuth Live CD project or um, Samurai uh, FTW, uh, or oh, I think it's FTW. I'm trying to remember it's WTF. Web testing framework. That's right. Samurai WTF. You can set it to listen to only that particular local interface. I'll be linking to those products a little bit later. All right. The first one we'll cover, and probably the one we're going to spend the most time on, is cross-site. Oh, sorry, cross-site scripting. It's called XXS because essentially CSS was already taken by cascading style sheets. All right, to define, and I've copied a lot of this liberally from the OWASP website. Um, and they said that was permissible in my understanding as long as I tell people where I got it from. They describe an XXS flaw. It occurs whenever an application takes user supplied data and sends it to a web browser without first validating and encoding that content. XXS allows attackers to execute script in the victim's browser, which can hijack user sessions, deface websites, possibly introduce worms, etc. Uh, I'm also going to throw in here, besides just scripting, injecting HTML as well, even if it isn't necessarily a, a true script. Let me give you a couple examples. The canonical example that everybody uses, which I think is kind of a sad thing, and I'll explain why in a second, is the script alert XSS script. Essentially, that is a simple little JavaScript for popping up a box that says, XSS. The reason I don't like the fact that this is the canonical example everybody gives is it gives the idea that the only thing you can do with XXS is 